In this driving lesson video, we're going to have a look at some more theory questions that you could be asked at the start of your driving test. Now, although it's important to be prepared for your driving test, the answers to these questions will be very useful to you no matter what stage of driving you're at, whether you're a beginner, pre-test or somewhere in between. So if you want to learn more about driving, whether it's learning or preparing for the test, then consider subscribing to this channel and hitting that bell notification where you can be notified whenever I upload a new video. So let's get started. One very common and very popular question that you could be asked is the following about crossroads. So let's say you are approaching a crossroads and it's not marked out by road markings. Who then has the right of way or who has priority? The answer is traffic to the right or traffic already about to turn or already in the middle of the turn. So if you're approaching an unmarked crossroads, that means it's not clear and obvious to anybody who has the right of way. It's probably more likely to come across this on rural or country roads or perhaps in a housing estate. It just depends where you are. So never approach a crossroads like that thinking you have priority. Slow down, be especially aware of traffic to the right and traffic already turning, and give way to traffic on the right and traffic already um, that have already started their turn. Uh, don't forget to look all around though, and just emerge slowly, showing good all around observation. So unmarked crossroads, traffic to the right and traffic already turning has right of way. Next question then, when are you allowed to stop on a motorway? The answer is you're not allowed to stop on a motorway ever, but there would be a few exceptions, such as if it's an emergency, like a breakdown or something like that, or other exceptional circumstances whereby um, a guard um, asks you to pull over, okay, on the instruction of a guard. Um, I suppose you could stop on a motorway if it's very slow moving traffic due to roadworks or due to delays, but that would be an obvious uh, exception. But generally, no stopping on a motorway unless you're instructed to do so by a Garda or exceptional circumstances like an emergency breakdown or something like that. Next question then is also to do with stopping. Are you allowed to stop on a yellow box? The answer is yes, you are but only if you're turning right. Generally speaking, um, the rule with a yellow box is as follows. No stopping, no parking, no blocking the yellow box. Um, but the exception is if you're turning right, like for example, at traffic lights, and you could then roll up into the middle in order to get a better view and in order to show good position and good progress. So you're closer to your to your, you're closer to finalizing your right turn basically. So no stopping in the yellow box, but the exception is on a right turn. What do the yellow zigzag lines on the road mean? So I think in a previous video, I may have covered the white zigzag lines, which means that you're coming up to a pedestrian crossing of some sort. But the yellow zigzag lines uh, mean that you're not allowed to park or stop in the area where it's marked out by the yellow zigzag lines. Now typically these yellow zigzag lines will be placed outside a school, as you can see here, um, or other um, public buildings I or public areas I suppose like hospitals or ambulance stations or a fire station and things like that. So they mean no parking, no stopping in the areas marked out by the yellow um, zigzag lines. Now there should be a sign to accompany it which gives more details about when you're allowed to park or when you're not allowed to park, but sometimes these signs are not always there. Our next question then is to do with the full headlights. So why is it dangerous to use your full headlights in the fog? The answer is if you use your full headlights in the fog, it just highlights the fog and makes the fog look like it's closer to you. So it doesn't do you any favors at all. In, if you're driving in the fog, you can use your fog lights if visibility is less than 80 to 100 meters ahead. These fog lights are based lower down on the front of the car. I, I'm referring to the front fog lights here, by the way. The front fog lights are lower down on the car, so that means they highlight the, the ground um, below the fog, because fog rises off the ground. So that one might give you a little bit of extra visibility 
But if you use your full beam headlights, um, that's not going to do you any good at all. It'll just highlight the fog and make it feel like you can't see very, very far ahead. So our next question then, um, when are you not allowed to overtake? So generally speaking, you should not overtake in any area where your visibility or your view of oncoming cars or oncoming hazards is impeded or hindered. So for example, don't overtake on a bend or on the brow of a hill, like, like when, when you can see the dip in a road up ahead, either or, um, maybe approaching a humpback bridge as well. It will be dangerous to overtake in those situations because you don't know what way the road is going to be and you may not be able to see very far ahead of you. Do not overtake on continuous white lines um, or hatched lines as well um, because we're not allowed to cross those unless it's an emergency. You must not overtake if it would mean breaking the speed limit and don't overtake if you can see that there's a car behind you about to overtake you and that's why we check our mirrors before we overtake or take turns. Um, do not overtake as well if it would mean going into a bus lane or a cycle lane. And just to reiterate, it's definitely so important to say do not overtake in any area where your view ahead is blocked or is not the best. Next we're going to talk about stop signs. If you're coming to a stop sign and there's no white line accompanying the stop sign, where should you stop then? You should stop at the sign, so the front of your car, your, your front lights basically, are level with the pole um, where the stop sign is. From there then, you can creep out slowly and gradually in order to get a better view of traffic. So if there's no white line, just stop at the sign instead. Staying on stop signs to a certain extent, why are stop signs um, a different shape to a yield sign? So a stop sign will be like an octagon um, shape with eight sides and a yield sign is a triangle shape. So the reason for this is if it's snowy, um, if the signs are covered in snow, you will be able to differentiate whether it's a stop sign or a yield sign. Also, if it's in different languages, um, in different parts of the world, um, the fact that it's uh, the, the shape of the sign, like the octagon versus triangle, will help you um, differentiate what type of junction it is. An added advantage as well is if you are on the road and you're not 100% sure who has the right of way, you could give a quick glance towards the road that you're not sure of and you might see the back of the stop sign or the back of a yield sign. So if you see that, look at here, you can see that there's, um, on this road, even though the no entry sign is blocking part of the sign, we can still make out that it's a stop sign on that side. So if you were coming up this road and you weren't 100% sure who has right away, a quick glance to the side of where the stop sign is there will tell you that the other cars have to stop for you. And similarly with yield signs, as you can see here, um, if you're driving along and you see the back of the yield sign, well then you can safely assume then that the other cars don't have right of way and you do provided you're on the main road. So that would be the main reason why we have a difference there between the stop signs and the yield signs in terms of shape. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and thanks very much for watching. I'll be back very soon with another video and don't forget to let me know in the comment section um, what kind of questions you were asked in your theory test and that could help other learners as well who might be going through the comment section. So thanks again, and I'll see you soon.